gaze at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, and it's time to get into this game a little bit deeper. Uh, last night we had our live reaction show, but now it's time to break into this game even further and talk about all the ins and outs that happened in this game. Uh, it was an exciting game. There were a lot of kind of interesting plays uh, that took us on highs and lows uh, and gave us a lot of things to talk about. Kyle Shanahan, you know, letting Trey Lance spin with the first team. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo getting out there with the first team and was supposed to come back, according to John Lynch. Uh, he never did come back. So there's a lot of a lot of cool storylines that go into this. A lot of cool storylines. A lot of things to talk about before we get too far into it. Into it, make sure that you smash that like button right now. Hit that subscribe button. Share the video with the rest of the faithful. Let them know about this great and wonderful recap in which we're going to be very specific and very transparent on our takes and why we're thinking the way that we're thinking. But Ant, let's start with you on this recap. I, I guess we can start with quarterback performance since it's the topic of the day. Quarterback performance for each of these guys. And then the fact that Jimmy was supposed to do one, series one right and series four was the reports that were coming out. Uh, Trey Lance supposed to do two and three, then Jimmy doesn't come back out. Just your overall take on quarterback for performance from this game, breaking down, uh, what did you think? I think first off, I thought Jimmy looked okay coming out. I didn't think it was uh, bad. I thought he came out and he was you know moving his feet, looking good in the pocket. Uh, he had a couple times where he got absolutely, you know, destroyed. Uh, that one where he rolled out and the guy was right there in his face and hit him and he got rid of the ball. Um, but overall, leaving the ball high to Ayuk, I think, is the, the blemish of what could have been a very, you know, great drive because he hits Ayuk in rhythm and on time. Then Ayuk is able to get up the field and probably score a touchdown. And that would have capped off a nice drive. Um, and then I think that he it's a case of circumstance. You have Trey Lance goes in and he does, I mean, Pretty poorly. I mean, I know there were some drops and stuff, but he's one of five. His numbers don't look good. One of five for nine yards and an interception. It's not looking too good for Trey Lance. So you get an opportunity to put him in a two-minute situation, which that's what you want him in those situations. You put him back out there. Doesn't mean Jimmy's going to get that opportunity now. So that's gets taken away. Jimmy's a veteran. He understands. You get Trey in that situation. Trey does very well. You come out in the second half and you want him to be able to expand on that, build on that. They did that. So I think everyone left the game, and especially Trey Lance left the game, feeling good about his situation. Kyle Shannon feeling good about ultimately how he can adjust to this offense, run this offense, because so I think it did get better you know, during the game. So I think overall both quarterbacks are fine. I don't think anything has changed. The one thing I think that was good was that we got situational football from Trey Lance, whether that be the two-minute offense, the red zone offense, and ultimately a two-point conversion. And, that's, and let's, not point, let's not forget to point out the fact that this is an area that Trey struggled with is two-minute offense situationals. It's an area that hasn't been good, that hasn't looked great, that has flashes and moments, and then immediately the drive stalls. I mean, we've been to we've been to plenty of the training camp practices where two-minute drill, move the ball situations, Trey Lance makes a nice, beautiful ball, throw down the field, big completion, and then the drive immediately dies after that, and you're like, man, I just want that guy to finish those drives out. However, when you put him in the red zone situations, right, the short yardage situations, lights out. He, he's easily the best quarterback in the roster when you when you have him in short downage, short yardage. You know, you shorten the field, condense the field, and there's less space to operate in. He actually operates better because you have to account for his legs, his mobility, his his the way he's able to get out of the pocket, right? And then the velocity at which he throws the football. He doesn't need as much space and get that ball in those tighter windows a lot quicker than than a guy like Jimmy and most of the guys in the league can do. He's got that type of you know velocity on, on the ball. He spins it that well. Uh, we saw that, though, today. We saw the execution in the two-minute. We saw the big play to Sherfield, like you talked about, and then the finishing the drive. Um, you know, We've been hearing people talk about how Trey Lance isn't using his feet, and it's Kyle Shanahan. Well, we saw him scramble on the, on the two-point conversion, right, and convert it if it hadn't been for a backside hold on Jalen Moore. We saw him get out of the pocket a, a series later, right, scramble for a first down and, and continue the drive and push the ball downfield. This guy can do those things. No one's telling him not to. I think he consciously in his head right now is trying to be a guy who operates more in the pocket, knowing that he has this tool, this set of tools right in his back pocket that he can use, utilize whenever he wants in order to have success. Yeah, I think he's going through a progression as far as he wants to operate inside the pocket, but then he wants to extend plays next. 
uh, later he'll he'll extend drives. I mean, that's really what you saw in this game. He extended plays and eventually he extended drives. That's what you're trying to do. Keep your eyes down the field. He wants to be a passer first. He needs to be able to operate this offense from with inside the pocket. Once he can, and he can do it at a high level, then he will be able to operate this offense outside the pocket where we already know he can be successful. There's not as much emphasis on working outside the pocket, including the run game and with the rollout pass, because you already know that's going to be an area of strength. Let's work on the areas of weakness in preseason because you know what strengths are and get those areas built up to where they're even with those strengths. Then you've got a com complete dynamic quarterback. That's what they're working on. Everyone just needs to be patient. Let him operate within the system. Kyle Shanahan's system is going to have some wrinkles in it, but ultimately it doesn't change. And Trey has to operate within that system. He's going to use his skill set 100%, but his biggest skill set is his mind and that big arm, not his legs. People are getting very into his legs. Steve Young became a great quarterback when he learned to operate inside the pocket and able to run the offense to full potential. He didn't run for six touchdowns in Super Bowl 29. He threw for six touchdowns in Super Bowl 29. That those performances are what you're looking for from Trey Lance down the road as far as six touchdowns a game, you know, performance. You're not going to get those by rolling him out in week one. Uh, Nagy's doing a disservice to Justin Fields. You're Absolutely. seeing two different ways of handling a quarterback. One guy is doing it the right way and Kyle Shanahan. One guy is doing it a, the wrong way. And what you're doing right now is just give, this is what happened to RG3. You had to give him a certain offense to be able to operate. Kyle Shanahan knows that that doesn't work eventually. It catches up with you. It won't catch up with him with Trey Lance because they're building a quarterback that could be impact in the future. And that's what I'm excited to see. And Ken, let me, let's point out something about another quarterback that Nagy has had that he developed in Mitchell Trubisky and how awful he looked towards the end of his time there, right, in Chicago. And a lot of that was because early on, they utilized Trubisky's ability to run the run the football, right, to try and make the game a little bit easier for him. I hate to break it to folks. Go watch film of Mitchell Trubisky right now in Buffalo. He looks phenomenal. He looks fantastic. They built him from the ground up in the pocket, making right. him a passer, and he looks significantly better. By no means is he going to take over Josh Allen's spot, but if Josh Allen goes down there in Buffalo, they're not going to have to retool that offense in order to get Mitchell Trubisky to run it. They're going to be able to run it. Kyle Shanahan understands that, right? You have a guy in Jimmy Garoppolo that can be your guy, that can be your starter, but can run your offense the way you want it run. And you have a guy in Trey Lance who has all the physical tools to run it at an even higher level, but maybe just needs some things that he has to clean up on. Let's not play necessarily all the way to the things that people view as his strengths, right? As a mobile quarterback who can run, let's work on those things that, like you talked about, Ant, are the weaknesses. The things that need to get cleaned up, because if those things get cleaned up, and then you add that on top of the things he already does great, this kid's unstoppable. He really is. I mean, once you put the whole package together, and he's able to put all the things you need to do inside the pocket with all the things he can do outside the pocket, um, that's when he becomes elite quarterback in this league. You want this guy to be one of those top five quarterbacks that can take you to the Super Bowl eventually. Uh, if, if you just want a version of him that can win a playoff game or to get you to the playoffs, then you're going to want to go a different route and just, you know, you're not going to develop him inside the pocket. But do it, letting him do all those other things and not develop in the pocket will hinder his growth. Um, so 100%, let him grow in the pocket. They know what they're doing. They know how to build a quarterback. They're doing it the right way. They're going to make sure this guy is able to execute at a high level. That's why they latched on to keeping Jimmy Garoppolo. They know Jimmy Garoppolo can show him the ropes. They know Jimmy Garoppolo can execute this offense at a high level, not to the highest level that Trey Lance is ultimately going to be able to do it. But right now, Jimmy can do it, and Jimmy shows a little bit of nimbleness uh, in this game. He did. And getting outside the pocket, it was nice to see him feel comfortable planting, no knee brace, planting, getting up the field, and running strong, ankles healthy, the knee is healthy, Jimmy Garoppolo is healthy. If he can do those things and extend some drives along the way, uh, that's a big benefit from the 49ers. Maybe this is the Trey Lance influence on him, where he knows, hey, you know what, i got to get a rocket up my butt and get some of these plays done, because he, he saw it, he pulled it down, he went and got, you know, got the yards that he needed to get. Um, so I think both of them are going to benefit each other. Both of them are going to benefit the 49ers. And ultimately, this is a good situation. It's not a bad situation. Not at all. No. Um, and I liked everything that I saw out of both guys tonight. Obviously, there were some things that needed to get cleaned up. But you know what else I liked, Ant? I liked this run game. I liked the running back room. I liked the things that Jermichael Hasty did tonight. I liked the things Wayne Gallman did tonight. It was nice to see an extended run for both of these guys because I feel both of them needed it in this offense. Gallman needs reps in this offense, right? Running behind this O-line. Jermichael Hasty needs those reps as well. He needs to be able to show. I feel very comfortable with these two guys as running backs three and four if that's the route this team ends up going. Yeah, and they were able to you know, really run and execute this offense at a high level. The offensive line was getting a push. You've seen the defensive line for the Chargers going backwards. It was a one or two yard push every single time, and then the holes would open and develop, and these running backs were able to get through those holes and you know get up the field and get positive yardage. 
there were a few negative plays which you want to see cleaned up, whether that was a defensive lineman, you know, making an offensive lineman look bad and beating him inside. I know Jalen Moore got beat inside. I know Lakin Tomlinson lost his guy a little early a couple times. Um, this stuff happens, especially in preseason, especially when you're not playing. When you're running a zone scheme, you're you're used to playing with a certain player. You get a chemistry. You know what they're going to do. When you start playing with other guys, it leaves little windows for the defensive players to get through and make plays. Ultimately, though, offensive line looked really good. I thought today, overall, even all the way you know through the second team, I thought the first and second team you know stepped up in a big way and developed a lot of big holes for this off for these running backs. Wayne Gallman operated inside very well. When he got on outside, you've seen why he doesn't bounce outside a lot. There's not that elite speed that the other guys have. Jermichael Hasey has a little bit more of that quickness. Once again, though, another guy that's not a top flight speed guy. The only guy we have on the roster besides Elijah Mitchell, who's injured, that can do that at a high level is Raheem Mostert. Everyone else is going to operate inside that box. Even the outside zone, they're looking for these guys to wash, overcommit, and then cut back against it, find a little hole, a little crease. Uh, and that's what you saw today was from these guys was a nice execution of the offense, nice execution of the run game. I thought overall it looked really good. Uh, almost uh, a day and night from last week. I thought there was a huge improvement. So that is a good sign. And I think that it also that carries over as well and translates over to the O-line, which I think had a better performance in tonight's, tonight's preseason game, uh, excuse me, yesterday's preseason game, than in week one against the Chiefs. Uh, overall, top to bottom, I thought all groups had a much better performance. Don't get me wrong. Third group definitely had some times where it was like, yikes, big, big yikes. Uh, second group as well had some times and some opportunities where guys could have made better blocks or put themselves in better situations and didn't, and and a guy took a shot for it, or we had a, a lost play that, that didn't have to be that. But overall, top to bottom, quarterbacks had more time when they were in the pocket. Yep. Running lanes were definitely there and more available, and we were able to get positive yards with the run game. Um, you can chalk that up to, well, the Chargers didn't have two of their better players out there playing in space. Derwin James who can come up and stop the run, and, and Bosa there on the outside. That's correct, but we also didn't have Alex Mack. We also didn't have Trent Williams, and we still were having a lot of success out there in the run game and in pass pro sets. So I'll take those things, especially when you got a rookie like Jalen Moore out there having to operate and man up the whole game at left tackle. Lots of experience, lots of reps for him. He handled it well. Did he get beat a couple times? Yes. But no glaring big-time uh, defeats in the pass pro, and that's a big you know point where we need him to be successful. You wonder, you know, ultimately what this guy is going to end up you know, turning into, but I think it's a promising start um, for a fifth round pick. The 49ers might have hit gold on this where he can develop behind Trent Williams and eventually step in at some point, whether that is at right tackle or whatever. Um, but right tackle, Mike McGlinchey also played very well early on. Uh, he, he looked nice. Him and Brunsko held that right side down. The leaks were coming from the left side with Lakin Tomlinson and Jalen Moore. And you expect that when you got the rookie and you got Jake Brindell, who's playing center who did well, you know, admirably, um, but he's no Alex Mack. And, and you can tell the difference, but still the offensive line vastly improved, looked very well. Um, some of the people I was talking to, you know, early this week were concerned about the offensive line. Everyone, you know, kind of the, all, the, all the talking heads were talking offensive line looked really bad, really horrible. And as a former offensive line coach, I said, you know what, it's, it's going to be okay. Um, they, they, were, they were looking fine. They've been improving. And ultimately, I think they proved it against the Chargers. They have to go stack that performance against – the Raiders. Raiders. Um, and then ultimately against Detroit as well. But I think that they're trending the right way. Forster's doing a good job. And they're getting together a nice unit that's going to be able to be successful to, for this 49ers offense. Agreed with you there. Um, and the position that kind of picked up some of that slack, right, and some of the some of that negativity, I guess you want to call it, is the wide receiver position who had an uncharacteristic amount of drops in this game, and they've been piling up. They piled up in this game. Uh, Brandon Ayuk had a couple more. Debo had one. Sanu had one. Richie James had one. Um, there's probably a few other guys who also had one, and I just can't name them. Are you worried about the drops at all? No, I'm worried about them from Richie James because it's been consistent. Uh, everyone else has been making catches besides this game. Uh, so I'm going to chalk it up to this is a one-time thing. I'm also going to put some of the onus on the quarterbacks. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, don't leave the ball high to Brandon Ayuk. Trey Lance, take some of the you know take some of the steam off that pass you're throwing to Mahomes Sanu. You had space to get him the ball. It didn't need to be on that frozen rope that you threw. Um, poor Richie James couldn't even get his head around long enough. The ball was already past him. He looked like me in the batter's box going against uh, Alex Rivers and a couple other uh, guys who ended up playing Major League Baseball when I was in uh, Murata Little League, yeah. where I was literally bringing the bat around and it was already in the catcher's glove. I had no idea where the ball was. I'll guarantee he heard the whistle. He never yes. even saw the ball. He just heard the whistle and the wind flow by him 100% because that was an absolute dart. Uh, and Trey does that. 
He needs to put a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, on those. You know, a little bit love. Give love. that ball some love. Yeah, don't, you don't have to. You don't have to beat it into submission. I think Bill Walsh used to call it touch. That's true. Um, let's give it some touch. Um, throw a catchable football. There is something to that. Throw a more catchable football. John Elway, famously, Dan Marino used to throw absolute darts, and those balls would bounce up into the air. So. Be 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 okay with taking a little bit off. It's going to be all right. Not a lot, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little. Just a little bit. Uh, but before we get to the defense, Ant, we got to get to the straight beast player of the game. And if you haven't been here for this before, it's a lot of fun. Let's check it out. <laughs> My straight beast, as somebody I alluded to earlier, actually, is Mike McGlinchey. Uh, Mike McGlinchey was pancaking defenders. He was getting the, you know, absolutely collapsing and allowing cutback lanes for these uh, running backs. And he was very good in pass pro. I seen him on some straight kick slides doing very well. So uh, I was I was encouraged. He wasn't going against uh, Bosa. Uh, so it was going to be a little bit easier for him. But he went against him all week in practice and also did well then. But he's my straight beast because he's out there. He's playing at a higher weight, but he's playing at a higher level, and I'm all for it. I think we can see good things from him, and this is a good performance to stack on. I like that a lot. Mike McGlinchey, a 49er who doesn't get a lot of love in this O-line, and in fact takes a brunt, right, a brunt of the beating, very similar to Eric Armstead. I imagine him and Armstead have some conversations about that sometimes. Like, man, sometimes a faithful, bro. I don't know what's going on <laughs> over there. Uh, but look, my straight beast, I have to tip my hat and give it to Travis Benjamin. Good old TB. He had the big touchdown catch. He had a couple other nice grabs as well. Looked solid in the punt return game. I like the one big punt return that he did have. It's about 10, 15 yards. He operated very well in space, maneuvered, was able to turn something that, if that had been Richie James, uh, probably would have been two to no yards on the return and got a good 10, 15 yards and gave us a little bit of extra space. I thought overall Travis Benjamin did the things that he needed to do in this game to build on some of the stuff that we saw in practice with some of his performances. And the best part is it wasn't over the top stuff. It was intermediate over the middle of the field type routes and things of that nature, showing that he can be a tool used in this offense, not like in San Diego and Los Angeles when he was there, right? Of just going over the top and deep. But also Ant being a guy that can operate intermediate, short, whatever you need him to do, he can use his speed, his route running to the 49ers' advantage in Kyle Shanahan's scheme. Um, he's going to be a very diverse weapon. Not not saying he's wide receiver six or anything, but he definitely had the kind of night and performance that he needed to have to put himself firmly back into the conversation. Yeah, we said he had to do this. You know, that's a good choice. We said he had to do this at practice. He was doing well, but he's never, he hadn't translated that to a game yet because Kansas City, he didn't look very good. He just didn't get a lot of opportunities, um, but he can win deep. He won another one deep against Sud with Sudfeld, a quarterback, and Sudfeld threw it up early you know, because he had a zero um, coverage, and he had all those guys coming after him, and he had to get rid of it, and he never even saw the ball. But he won again. You know, That's the thing. You see that on film, you know he won another battle. Travis Benjamin, right now I believe with that six wide receiver spot, is about ankle deep. Right, he, he's, he's starting to walk down the stairs and get into that pool that is the sixth spot. Um, the only problem is, is he's got Jalen Hurts sitting there, and as long as that knee's okay, Jalen Hurts on the diving board ready to jump in and take it from him before he gets there. Um, Richie James, though, we're okay. He's on the float. He's sitting over on the side getting a sunburn. He's he's in the kiddie pool right now, he, he, deciding he, whether or not he even wants to dip his toe in the big boy yeah, pool. Yeah, he, he's afraid he's going to dive and miss um, because he's been missing a lot of passes. Unfortunately, he did have a nice kick return. He did. Um, so I will give him that. Or it was a punt return. I'm punt sorry. Return, punt return. Return. It, yeah. was, it was nice. Um, so we give him credit for that. But you're right. Travis Benjamin is positioning himself to get in there and take the spot. Um, and I think the I think it's clear right now that those are the three guys in the battle for that sixth spot. Uh, Simba Webster from Kansas City week to this week didn't in increase his chances. And I think he is sitting you know, back there at the nine spot. Um, he's not going to quite be able to get into this, this job. So one of those three guys are going to make the team. Who it is, we'll find out. Only time will tell. But we got to give some love to this defense. We got to turn our attention to the defense because the D line, and the D line was lights freaking out. It was all over the place. I mean, they were getting in there, stopping the run, getting in there, you know, causing havoc. Uh, Easton Stick did a good job of, you know, he did. extending plays, getting outside the pocket, you know, making plays. In fact, the touchdown, he got outside the pocket and threw it. Um, and that is still a little bit of a question mark when you have the, you know, that base defensive line out there when Eric Arms is out there. Um, a lot of times they do break containment, able to get outside and make plays. So that's something that needs to be worked on. But what you saw was when Ebucom was in there, he was able to chase down Easton Stick. Um, you had Kerr and Street and those guys on the inside putting pressure up the middle. And that's not even your starters. You know what I mean? Those are the guys that are depth pieces. Jordan Willis absolutely dominating a right tackle on a multiple occasions. One time with the sack for the safety. The other time 
He beats him around the corner and gets absolutely held and Kerr knocked down the pass. Those are great plays. And the defensive line looked good. They looked physical. And I think ultimately once you add Bosa, Ford back into the mix and Ebicom gets healthier, you're going to see the speed that goes with it. Um, but Jordan Willis, I, I really want this guy on the team. So once he gets back from suspension, he's going to be an important piece as an outside edge rusher because um, this team has all the potential to be very stout. And I think Jordan Willis actually showed himself to be a better player today, just today, than Arden Key and maybe put some pressure on him eventually for that roster spot. I think he was the quietest one of the end end guys that was out there. And I don't think Arden Key had a bad day. He was just the quietest in terms yeah, of Yeah, he production. was setting the edge nice. He just didn't do anything else. No, yeah. that's, he was doing. He was playing a role today, and that was about it. There were not a lot of stats. What I found very funny was Ebucom being pretty much do, essentially double teamed on every snap while he was in. Um, it's very obvious now while they were holding in practices against Ebucom. This guy is a freaking beast, yeah. dude. This is a monster. Any any sort of pass rushing situation, they were sending both either tight end, keeping a tight end in and the tackle over there on him, or we're sending a guard and a tackle over towards Ebicom and basically singling everybody up. Um, people being like, well, you know, Armstead looked good today, but it's just one preseason game. Part of the reason Armstead looked good today is because Ebicom was drawing double teams. And yeah, I hate to, br- hate to break it to y'all. You put Bosa on the field, you put Ford on the field, Ebicom and Armstead, guess what? You can't double them all. You can probably maybe double two, and that even that's dangerous, right? Even if you just throw, you know, two, you're basically putting two other guys on two, one on one. Pick your poison. Eric Armstead has shown that he can beat one on ones and solos. Nick Bosa, we know he can beat one on one solos. The Chargers already knew that D Ford could do it based on Thursday's practice, where he got four sacks, right? Ebucom dominating. This this front group is going to be nasty. It doesn't matter who you put in there. We're gonna have success. Yeah, you are. And and people are going to be talking about this and people are going to be worried about it. These NFC West teams are going to be scared. They're hoping right now that these guys don't stay healthy because if they're healthy, they're going to put a lot of pressure on teams to be successful in the run game. Because if they're not and you're able to just pin your ears back and go and get after these quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray and, and Matthew Stafford are going to be running for their life. And for Stafford, he don't run fast enough to run for his life. Somebody, throw like, a lot away. somebody like Kerr is going to land on him and it's going to be, you know, lights out or Contavious Street, asked Drew Brees. Um, Rip. those things are going to happen. So these guys are going to get after it. They're going to make plays and what ultimately they're going to do a lot. And this is going to be nice for those linebackers because they're going to eat up double teams. They're going to occupy blockers and keep people off all pro Fred, Dre Greenlaw and Aziz al so they can make plays run free and make tackles in space. It's the perfect situation, a, a great way to build your front seven. So that way, when you do bring blitzes or you bring these stunts from the interior, it's all great to double team when you know where they're coming from. Uh, but all of a sudden when you run a TE stunt and somebody comes looping around the outside and you didn't account for them and that guard's trying to move back to the left to catch a fast Ebicom or D Ford and he gets up the field into the quarterback's face, the quarterback has to get rid of the ball or eat it and uh, that's not a good situation for the offense. Uh, the opposite of a good situation. It's a horrible situation, a situation you don't want to find yourself in. So D-line, keep it up and let's keep putting those teams in those awful, terrible, no good situations. Uh, as for the linebacker play, wasn't great, wasn't terrible. I liked some of the things that I saw. Sometimes we were off balance and off kilter a little bit. I saw Drake Greenlaw lose footing a lot in this game, which was odd. I, this is something I've never seen out of him. So I don't know if it was just a field situation, turf situation, or if it was just he was reading certain things and was just being maybe a little bit too over the top, right, and was over-pursuing a little bit and then having to recover. I'm not sure what it was, uh, but I, I didn't hate performance overall from the linebacking group and it's not like their first their first group offense that they were running without that that first team did a whole lot in terms of ball movement and things of that nature both of their drives right that ended up getting them closer to the end zone to scoring drives all came off of very shoddy calls for the officials and really pushing those drives downfield and extending drives for them i thought overall linebacking play was fine i liked a lot what i saw out of jonas griffith again Dre greenlaw had some moments as well and demetrius flanagan Foles did a pretty good job in the box coming up and making a lot of tackles yeah, the linebacker core overall looked pretty good. I like what Griffith does. I mean, I've I've liked him for a while. And I think now he's got the body to go with it. Uh, two hundred fifty pounds, six foot four. I mean, he's he's got all the ability. He's doing a good job of picking up guys in coverage. He's a solid tackler, which I like. Um, again, another day again where a lot of the times where guys were catches, he was literally blanketing them. Oh yeah, he's on him. And Dre Greenlaw, I thought was just a little, you know, a little too aggressive. I think that's really all it was. He was hyped. Um, you know, there was a lot of stuff that was going on in these two practices. He was probably out there ready to smack someone, uh, and then he was overrunning it. Maybe they weren't as fast as he was when you get into a game situation. Sometimes that happens in practice. Even though you're playing against another team, it's one speed. You get into the game, you're playing at one speed, but they're not. 
Uh, that happens a lot. He'll he'll you know get that worked out and get it together, and he'll make plays. Ultimately, the linebacker group, you're right, did okay. Uh, Demetrius Flanagan Foles had a decent game. Yeah. I thought he shined on special teams always. Um, but I thought in in the box sometimes he got caught up. He definitely uh, does in, in situations, and also when he when he made contact with a running back, he went backwards. I want I want linebackers that are going to be able to finish tackles by moving them backward. You know, actually hitting the guy and stopping momentum. Uh, he does play light, so he gets moved back. Other than that, though, I thought at least he was there and putting his nose in there and making tackles. That's what I liked out of him. I think that was honestly that's what I wanted to see out of him was him putting him, him putting himself in position to make tackles. Um, but yeah, you're right. He definitely has some things to work on because if you're asking me right now which guy I'd rather have, it's probably Jonas Griffith. Yeah, I, Jonas Griffith, one hundred percent, because he can play in the he can play in the middle or he can play that Sam. He's been learning the Sam backer spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's going to come down to I think they'll probably keep you know five guys. We know who the three guys are going to be, the starters, and then it's Jonas Griffith, Flanagan Foles, Michael Kendricks, who because of his salary, it appears that that is somebody they're ultimately going to keep. But now with the toe stuff, do you have any concerns? Uh, maybe, a little bit. Of course, I always have concerns. You know, We'll see what happens with that. It's more about what it is, right? Yeah. If, it, if it's turf toe or something like that, maybe not as much, but if it's some sort of break or a fracture. Depends. Then... I'd actually rather it be a break or a fracture than turf toe. Probably going to heal faster. Yeah, turf toe, you, know, you could be out for a while. So True. Uh, that's concerning news. So we'll, we'll see how that all shakes out and develops. Um, but ultimately, I think they would feel okay too with Marcel Harris. Uh, I I agree with you there. Yeah. He he definitely had some moments as well today. Um, look, secondary wise, I liked what I saw out of Talanoa Hufanga yet again, building on his performance uh, from week one of the preseason. Whether it was special teams coverage, he was always again around the ball. Whether he was the guy making the tackle or the guy that was about to make the tackle uh, in the secondary, coming up in space, the blitz off the edge for the big sack. Um, Talano Fonga builds on his performance. Diamondo Lenore, I thought, built on his performance as well. He had some great moments out there today as well. Uh, Aubrey Thomas having some struggles, but showed some flashes in the run game. You talked about that in our reaction show. Um, so if you missed that, make sure that after games you come by the channel because we got a whole reaction show for you as well. Uh, is there anyone defensively in that secondary that you really, really liked, that stood out that you loved, or that, that did something that you really loved, or anyone that you're concerned with? I think Talano Hufanga. I mean, the way he's able to play in the box and execute there is something that we expected. Uh, he's going to be able to blow up screens when you play the, you know, the Rams and those kind of teams that like to execute those smoke screens and stuff, tunnel screens. He's going to blow those kinds of things up. Uh, also blitzing, you know, from inside. The timing that he had on that blitz was absolutely fantastic. Uh, the, the offense had no chance to stop it, and he was in there and made the tackle. He's a sure tackler. I still have questions about him in the deep third in coverage, um, so that's something he's going to have to grow on. Uh, but I thought overall the you know the young guys are getting a lot of time and a lot of you know time to play. And Yamato Lenore, well, you're right, he was in coverage well. I thought Ombre Thomas had a better performance in Kansas City overall. Um, it, he's still grabby, he's still holding on a little bit, but he's adjusting to football in the NFL. And you're right, I, that is one thing I loved about him was up at the line of scrimmage. He was being very physical with runners. Um, so that is something you can look at because when you're not afraid of contact, and that's what that's his only issue right now, right? Is a lot of contact with these receivers. Once the technique cleans up, he's able to use that physicality um, to his advantage. Look at Richard Sherman, what he did for all these years. It will ultimately work on him, you know, work out for him. The other thing is they're putting these guys in tough situations and a lot of man covered situations. The, the and, Jalen Guyton one yeah. comes to mind where he got beat down the sideline, yeah. um, and he was with him all the way. He turns and looks for the ball a split two second early. And loses Jalen Guyton. Jalen Guyton gets a little bit more of a separation and then makes the big catch. Yeah, that's the technique issue. Correct. Because you, if you don't have your hand on the guy, if you can't feel this guy, you do not turn your head around. In fact, if you lose space, if there's space, you don't turn your head around at all. You run full speed until you catch up with this guy. And then you're all you're doing is watching his eyes. If his eyes get big, you know the ball's there. Get your hands up and try to knock it away. Um, you never look back if you don't have contact with that receiver. You better just gut it out and try to catch up. Um, so ultimately, that's that's the issue. It's a technique thing. Keep your hand on the guy. That way you can you know he, you don't lose track of him. But that's a tough thing to do. Is stay with Guyton. He's fast. He's he's, he's fast. He's real fast. Yeah. He's he's super fast. Super fast. He's super fast. So I mean that and that was the only real big play that was a big play that he gave up in terms of big yardage downfield. I know right. he had the PI as well. But I mean that other than that, I liked what I saw from Ombre Thomas there, and I do agree with you that I think his performance was better. I know some 49er fans are a little disappointed because they set the bar so high and they listened to a few people who said this guy needs to be cornerback two right now, potentially even quarterback one right now. He's not there. That no. year off was definitely going to it was definitely going to take some time coming back off of a year off of football at the college level, uh, coming up and playing against fast NFL wideouts. Yeah, definitely. Um, 100%. 
uh, he, he's gonna he's gonna make improvements. He's gonna get better. Um, we just gotta let you know let him develop. I don't think ultimately he was a third round pick. He should have been like a fourth round pick, and I don't think we'd have the same expectations for him if he was a fourth round pick. Uh, but he'll be fine. Yeah, Jared Maiden had himself a nice pick. Uh, should have should have been a pick six. That was upsetting or upsetting that it got called back anyway. Uh, and then Hawkland Dix had some moments early where I thought he was looking all right, and then the big touchdown that. Uh, Easton throws, right? Uh, Mr. Easton throws it into the end zone there, and Haha Clinton Dix is kind of just lost in space and drifting up towards the line of scrimmage when he has a when he has basically back half of the end zone coverage. Um lets a guy just kind of sit in that zone behind him and gives it the touchdown pass. Does this performance do you this performance doesn't get him cut, I don't believe, but do you think this performance bodes well for him going forward? I think it's fine. I mean, I, I think besides the one mistake he played well at safety. He was once again a sure tackler. He's finding himself around the ball. If that tight end doesn't get the hand up earlier, he has that interception. It's true. Um, where they were trying to say it was he was going for a big hit. No, he was going for the ball. He was looking to make an interception. In this situation, he let himself drift away from his receiver and lose, you know, lose track of the guy in the in the back of the end zone. Uh, he should have stayed on him. I get what he is doing. He's he's reading Easton Stick, and he thinks Easton Stick's about to go out of bounds and then throw the ball towards the sideline. And he's thinking, oh, I'm going to go over there and intercept this ball. And Easton Stick whips it back across his body and makes a nice throw. It was. Uh, it's a good play. Ha ha, Clinton Dix lives, he learns, and he'll fix it. And he'll make sure he doesn't make this mistake again against the Raiders because um, that'll be the opportunity to make the team. And if he makes the same mistakes – then he's going to be in trouble and he won't, you know, probably won't make this football team, but he's still in the driver's seat and has the opportunity to make this team because of the injuries at the safety position. That you are correct about, sir. And we go from guys who had some uh, performances uh, to time. It's time to talk about the players in this game that were hot and hot on the block. It's time for the block is hot. Yep, it is block is hot time, defensive players of the game. And it wasn't that hard for me to figure out. Um, I went with the big man in the middle, Zach Kerr. I was going all of, all line this time, all front seven. And Kerr, I thought, had an absolute fantastic game, putting pressure up the middle, getting his hands up, knocking the ball away, um, You know, putting pressure on Stick where Stick got the intentional grounding. I thought he looked very good today. For a man that's 330 pounds, he sure is agile and able to operate um, very well with his hands and, and good technique, and he's an absolute run stopper in the middle. Um, so one, one, one fantastic game from him, and I was excited to see his performance, and I'm excited to see how he stacks this against the Raiders um, because that is a lot of great depth coming from that 49ers defensive line. Just think, when DJ Jones comes out, we've got Kerr going in, so I feel good about that. Not only do I feel good about Kerr, I feel good about this whole freaking D-line, which is why... For me, the block is hot. Has to go to everyone. Uh, every member of that defensive line. Ooh, the whole one. I like top it. Top to bottom. Incredible performance. I thought they built off some of the things that we didn't see in the Chiefs preseason game. People were talking about I didn't see as much pressure until we got to the third group. It felt like there was pressure pretty much all night. It felt like they weren't able to get a lot of the run game going and big run opportunities. Uh, the Chargers really weren't extending many drives and doing things of that nature. Yeah. So I got to. I just have to give it to all of them, man. I can't can't single out one guy. There are obviously guys who had great performances. Armstead started off great. Ebucom built in off of that. Street had his moments, right? Uh, Kerr, as you just said, has moments. Hurst, before he goes down, has... Willis has his moments. I thought just top to bottom, it was fantastic. Chris Kaserik, tip my hat to you, sir. You got this group playing top notch. Yeah, realize what you just did. For somebody that has, wow, that's bold, absolutely specific, you don't go specific with your pick for the block is hot it's almost like there's a theme and a pattern here yeah get ready folks season two is gonna be wild <laughs> it's gonna be I, wild I, I guess so it, it's gonna be wild because and last year we introduced the hurt business right we we, we, we were able to bring in a few people and, and every once in a while some guys go out there and, and lay some wood and we get to introduct induct some new members into the hurt business right for the 49ers well, we got a couple inductees today, don't we? Yes, we definitely do. The Hurt Business is growing in a big way. 49ers out there laying the wood. Laying the freaking wood. When you are an absolute big-time hitter, you get to join the Hurt Business. And one of those guys I don't think is going to surprise anyone but he's out there, and he caught somebody out in the flat and absolutely destroyed them, and that was Marcel Harris. Uh, <laughs> he sized him up, and he found out he was wanting. He laid him out a great hit. Marcel Harris joined the Hurt Business and made sure the Chargers know 
that he's there and you don't want to mess with 36. You don't want to mess with that at all, man. That that guy, he, he actually got inducted last year into the Hurt business, oh, yeah. but it was as a safety. So he's now in as a linebacker as well. Marcel Harris brings brings the heat, man. He, he brings the business. He's packing. He yeah. brings the Hurt with him all over the place. And and another guy, an undrafted gentleman, Justin Hilliard laying some wood as well today. <laughs> you like seeing that other guy. I, he's not going to make the rosters. This is a short-term Hurt business status for Mr. Justin Hilliard. But I like to see it. I love it when you got linebackers out there making sure that the authority, right, is being laid down. The smacketh down is being laid all over their candy behinds. I think that's going to be a hard cut for them to make. It uh, is. Hill Hilliard is showing himself to be a very good player um, operating that mic position. I don't think he's you know better than Jonas Griffith right now. No. There's some development that needs to happen there, but I wouldn't be surprised if another team tries to take a shot at him because um, he's been proving to be a very adequate linebacker for the 49ers defense he very very much has I, I like the, the progression that justin hilliard has made i know he'll keep making it i hope he gets to get stashed in the practice squad and keep making it in san francisco yeah. but only only time will tell folks let us know what you thought about this recap top to bottom did you like it did you hate it did we not give someone some love are we not being critical in certain areas we want to hear from you cutback crew let us know in the comment section down below right now what you thought about it. And while you're down there, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already, hit that notification bell. That way you're notified for all of our great content. Join the Discord server. That way, if YouTube forgets to notify you, you get notified on Discord. You won't miss a single episode. You won't regret it. Yeah, make sure you're always getting involved. It's a lot of fun. We're having fun talking 49ers football with a bunch of smart 49ers football fans, very passionate people who just love the game and enjoy it. And that's where we have the greatest conversations. Um, but yeah, if you've seen a performance or something that needs to be broke down that we didn't get to touch on this, let us know. Um, so that we can get into it because that, that's one of the things I like doing is when we don't see something, we had somebody point out in our reaction show that maybe the offensive line, um, wasn't very happy to play with Trey Lance at times because of their attitude. Um, we didn't see it, but you know what? going to dive into it and see if that is a thing. Um, so 100% point it out. We'll look into it uh, and give our assessment on it. So it should be nice. Absolutely. And whether you're a day one OG or whether you're Timothy Sr. right here, just becoming a member of the Cutback Crew, we appreciate all the support that we're getting from all of you. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you head on over to the merch shop. Grab yourself some sweet TCC merch, some incredible 49ers Training Camp 2021 t-shirts. It's never been more accurate, Ant, than it has been today. And apparently, Kyle Shanahan has made some comments, or excuse me, Matt Mayoka has made some comments that Kyle Shanahan has refused to name a starter. No surprise there because the Shanahan plan is in full effect. You're just going to have to stay tuned to see what that is. Yes, and I'm not even going to get into this cause, because my mind just went crazy and we'll be going for another hour on the whole starter thing. Not going to go into it, um, but I'm excited about 49 Hours Football. I'm excited about all this week's content. There's going to be a lot of great things from the cuts to leading into this Raiders game and these 49ers players getting their last opportunity not only to play on the field, but some of them to prove they deserve to be on this final 53. Also a final 53 coming in due time. We're going to have Project 53, so it's going to be an exciting week or two of football uh, before we get into Detroit. Detroit, we're coming for you. Project 53 just around the corner and plenty of great content coming all up in the, all, all over, all over you. you got, we got content coming to you from every angle. You're not even going to be ready for it. But until that time, 49ers fans, you stay safe. Remember the right way. Is always the 49ers way.